You're craving Chinese food, you're craving chicken, don't worry, I got you. Let me show you three of my favorite Chinese chicken dishes, starting with stupid easy home cooking all the way up to pretty advanced Sichuan cuisine. I promise you one thing though, all three are delicious. The first dish called Ke Le Di Chi is so simple it's actually embarrassing and that's because of a not so secret secret ingredient. First you'll need some chicken wings separated in half. You give those a quick fry from both sides with the optional addition of a few ginger slices and once they're golden you add coke, that's right, and soy sauce and that's it. Cover and cook for 15 minutes until the liquid has reduced to a sticky glaze. I know what you're thinking. Coca-Cola? Really? How is that an authentic Chinese dish? Well, actually, Coca-Cola was invented in the mid-18th century by a Chinese medicine scholar named Bao Liwei. And I sure hope you did not just believe me because that is of course completely not true. But what is true is that cola chicken wings really are a very popular, quick and easy homestyle dish in China. And also if you think about it, Coke does contain flavors like clove, orange peel, cinnamon, which are definitely a thing in traditional Chinese cooking. So it's not as crazy as it sounds maybe. Anyway, level one completed, because who doesn't love a sweet and aromatic chicken wing? Let me guess, you're probably ready to move on to a slightly more challenging recipe, am I right? Let's make Sanbei Ji or 3 cup chicken, which I fell in love with when I traveled to Taiwan. First, we're gonna need chicken thigh meat, deboned and cut into large chunks. Next, we'll add our marinade. Dark soy, a drop of light soy, Chinese cooking wine and, quite untraditional but my personal recommendation, a bit of oyster sauce. It's just too good in this dish to leave it out. Finally, add some sugar, a few cracks of white pepper and marinate for around 20 minutes. By the way, in case you were wondering, the name 3 cup chicken refers to the three main aromatics in this dish. Soy sauce, cooking wine and sesame oil. The last one of which we haven't met yet, so let's do that. To a hot pan, first add some vegetable oil and then add an equal amount of toasted sesame oil. It's gonna smell super nutty and delicious, which we are gonna embrace by adding some garlic and ginger into the oil to infuse. I also love adding one piece of star anise, but that one's optional. Give your aromatics a quick stir and then add your marinated chicken pieces. One of the cool things about Sanbei Ji is that we can simply use the marinade as our sauce. So add that in, cover and simmer for about 15 minutes. Once the chicken is cooked through, take off the lid and reduce the sauce until it looks a little bit frothy like this. At this point you're gonna add an optional few slices of fresh red chili if you like it spicy and a non-optional handful of Thai basil leaves and then stir that for just about 20 to 30 seconds. So the original Sanbeiji comes from a Chinese province named Jiangxi and that version does not contain any Thai basil. In fact, I don't think I've seen Thai basil in Chinese cooking anywhere, correct me if I'm wrong. But in Taiwan where I learned about Sanbeiji, Thai basil is always part of the dish and in fact for me that's what makes the dish. And I've actually seen some people try to substitute the Thai basil with regular sweet basil, I tried that didn't work at all for me, so stick with Thai basil and enjoy your delicious Sanbei Ji. Level 2 completed. Okay, Kung Pao chicken is the cliche favorite of all foreigners who live in China or travel to China. And sadly, I can confirm the stereotype. But the good news is that my Kung Pao Jiding or Kung Pao chicken game is very strong. Here's how I do it. We begin with a piece of diced chicken breast. Make sure your chicken pieces aren't too big. We're gonna marinate those in a bit of Chinese cooking wine, cornstarch, a drop of light soy, salt and sugar, and a few cracks of white pepper. Don't forget to give everything a good mix and while that's marinating, we make a sauce from light soy, dark soy, more cooking wine and very importantly a good glug of Chinese dark vinegar. Normally you'd balance the vinegar with sugar but I recently started using maple syrup instead. I know it sounds weird but it's amazing. Highly recommend it. Here's a bit of cornstarch just to thicken that sauce later on and this is ginger juice which I've simply squeezed from freshly grated ginger. I love this step because it gives me the taste of ginger without having to bite into big chunks of it. Now before we start cooking there's one more thing we have to do. We need to pass the chicken through oil, a classic Chinese technique called guoyo, which helps us get super juicy chicken bites because the hot oil sort of traps the moisture inside. We don't even need the chicken to crisp up, just make sure there are no raw spots on the surface of your chicken. This should only take like a minute. And now we can finally start cooking. Off the heat, 
Add some Sichuan peppercorns to your pan or wok and pour over some of that chicken oil we just used. Bring up the heat and just give those a quick fry until your pepper starts to crackle a bit and smell real nice and then you get it up. We just want to infuse the oil with the flavor. Now add in some roughly chopped garlic, dried chilies, as well as a bit of doubanjiang, which is fermented chili and bean paste. This will help both spiciness and color. Now we can return the chicken, give everything a few quick stirs and add a handful of chopped spring onions, roasted peanuts and stir. Next we can add our sauce, reduce it for not more than a minute and in the very end we add some diced and very importantly de-seeded cucumber. The addition of cucumber is a little bit untraditional but you do see that a lot in China and I love it, so I do it. And this is it. Gong Bao Ji Ding. I told you my Kung Pao chicken game was strong, didn't I? That was level three. Make sure to check out my other Chinese cooking videos if you enjoyed that one. I'm also gonna be dropping my very first Q&A video in a few days, so if you wanna ask me anything about food, about me, about YouTube, now is the last chance. Thanks for watching, I hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next one. This video was brought to you by Undong's epic Patreon supporters. Don't forget to subscribe and smash the bell for weekly food inspiration from all over the world.